and a very warm welcome to English News Package with radio and television for the hour. Making headlines, petroleum price highly increases to new price for the month of June and July. Ministry of Police and the Ministry of Infrastructure are working to implement new regulations to road transportation. And Radio Tonga 1 or AM radio was shut down temporarily for a few hours due to installation work between the transmitter and the tower at Popua. We'll have these and more stories later on in the bulletin, now with the news in details. The Tonga Competent Authority recorded the highest increase of the petroleum price for the month of June and July. The new petroleum retail prices inclusive of consumption tax will increase for all products. The petrol increased from 3 per anga and 83 seniti to 4 per anga and 28 seniti per litre. Kerosene increased from 3 per anga and 10 seniti to 3 per anga and 35 seniti per litre. And the diesel increased from 4 per anga and 18 seniti to 4 per anga and 36 seniti per litre. The increases for all petroleum products will be effective on Monday, the 20th of June 2022. The Ministry of Police and the Ministry of Infrastructure are working to implement new regulations to road transportation. In a combined radio and television program of the Tonga Police and the Transport Division of the Infrastructure Ministry, the Road Safety Manager of Traffic Division of the Tonga Police, Inspector Lemoto Piliu, says the new regulation directs the public to prohibit placing a container near the road. The people should understand that for the future, they won't be using their front yard for whatever purposes. There are places to apply for to get a permit from uh, such as placing containers on the roadside very close to the roads, even the Tonga Water Board and the Tonga Power Limited. Whenever they want to install a street light, they will have to apply to the Infrastructure Ministry for a permit first before doing so. These are all for road safety and precautionary measures. If not, there are fines imposed on those who carry out those works without a permit under these new regulations. The two ministries are working collaboratively on helping people be aware of these new regulations. As such, the Infrastructure Ministry is working to provide three lanes to roads that are yet to have three lanes to avoid traffic congestion during peak hours. The lawyer representative of the Ministry of Infrastructure, Bosesi Bloomfield, says these two new regulations include regulation for drivers who do not know how to park besides the road. <coughs> the concern by the government is because there are many vehicles, so we are seeing a traffic congestion every morning and vehicles parking wherever blocking the road. We've also noticed people driving without a license, so all these issues will be looked at under this new regulation. The hope is to be able to address the issue of traffic congestion during peak hours. In a report from the Transportation Division of the Ministry of Infrastructure, they issue 200 to 300 licenses to new vehicles every month. The World Bank has approved uh, 20 million uh, US dollars of uh, supplemental financing in addition to the 19 million US dollars committed and disbursed this financial year through the Tonga Second Resilience Development Policy Operation. While the country was recovering from the impacts of 2020's tropical cyclone Herald, the economic losses to tourism and other sectors caused by the pandemic, the January eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano and subsequent tsunami had an immense impact. The World Bank resident representative to the Pacific, Lasse Melgard, said five months have passed since the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai eruption and the economic impact has been significant. Minister for Finance Honorable Tatafu Moyaki says although Tonga is strong and resilient under these situations, the recent multiple disasters have emphasized the urgent need to accelerate building national resilience, better prepare for and mitigate against disasters and climate-related emergencies. 
The tsunami and ashfall following the eruption affected 85% of the Tongan population directly, causing widespread damage to houses, schools, roads and power and water supply networks. And in addition to the eruption, Tonga also experienced its first COVID-19 outbreak earlier this year. The recovery support following the eruption is also being channeled through existing World Bank projects, including repairs to school infrastructure as part of the Tonga Safe and Resilient Schools project and strengthening of early warning systems through the Tonga Pacific Resilience Project. The transmission of AM radio, also known as Radio Tonga 1, was shut down today from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. The three hours of shutdown was unable the technicians from Japan and the Tonga Broadcasting Commission to complete a new project or national emergency warning system and to install the automatic tune unit inside the existing AM radio tower at Popoa. The work includes the installing of wires in technologies in Tonga Broadcasting Commission's new building and also the installation of new resources required under the project. The chief engineer of Tonga Broadcasting Commission, Solomon Efi, now says the main reason for the shutdown is to ensure it is safe for the engineers while they are working on the field. And the reason for that, uh, we are installing an automatic uh, tuning unit controller uh, between the transmitter and the tower. Uh, the main purpose for this is to reduce the power and match the, the transmitter and the antenna. So we have a safe environment for the Japanese engineers and TPC engineers to work and build the new tower. And it's very important that the public uh, noted that uh, the power sometimes will be reduced, um, especially to 2.5 kilowatt or 1 kilowatt. This is for the safety of the staff um, installing the tower. And also the public may aware that uh, from June to September, there will be a lot of uh, disruption to the AM radio services. Uh, we, we keep in mind especially the pandemic uh, right now here in Tonga and uh, any other emergency broadcasting. So we try to minimize the disruption of the AM uh, radio. Uh, we do our best with the MADEC, especially with the Japanese team. Uh, we do our best, but uh, for the public to know, there will be some time from June and up to September, we'll, we'll keep a notice on radio, they will shut down the radio for the maintenance and uh, building the new tower for AM radio. While the AM radio was shut down in three hours, Radio Tonga 2 or FM 90 continued its service for the public. Tonga Broadcasting Commission again apologized for any inconvenience that this may have caused. The Ministry of Revenue and Customs will continue to inform and educate more to the public in ways they may understand the importance for businesses to use cash register machines. The main concern is because some of the businesses, especially Asian shops, do not provide accurate tax information when submitting their income report to the Ministry. With such inaccurate information, it misleads the Ministry on the right amount of tax that should be paid to the government. Vahe said this has been an ongoing issue for years, and the only way to address it is for the consumers to always request for a receipt when purchasing items from the shops, as it is a must for the businesses to provide this. He adds that financial reports from businesses that this year will be more well organized and complete as the Ministry is enforcing the Revenue Services Administration Act that applies to all businesses in using the electricity sales register system. This is the most important pathway for the Ministry as the legal framework is ready to be implemented. There are basic requirements here as we are going to use the regulations policy for cash register machines within the Revenue Services Administration Act. The problem is the wholesale and the retail businesses are mostly owned by the Asians. Just for clarification, so we are not being racist and just focus on Asian shops only. 
But according to the information that we have collected so far, most of their shops have been submitting inaccurate tax data to the ministry. Hence, the reason why we are encouraging every shops to have an electronic cash register machine so that we have a record of the items sold with the amount of tax that should be paid. He also explained the importance of collecting tax from businesses. As you know, the budget for the new fiscal year was just approved this week. Another budget deficit for the country as more than 400 million baanga is from tax collected and the rest from the in-kind and development partners. Some people think it is not appropriate for the government to increase their spending as we are still in difficult times, but that's an economic principle as when we are in the period of recovering the government's spending also needs to increase to strengthen the country to move forward. That's why the government is spending so much in this budget estimate and this is a part of trying to tidy up the tax to strengthen the government's projects. Businesses are trying to make profits while the government is trying to collect the businesses' tax as it is helping all The Enforcement of the Revenue Services Administration Act on using the electricity sales register system will be effective on the 1st of next month. There are 30 businesses that the Ministry of Revenue are enforcing this act to start using cash register machines and their names will be provided later. As Tonga is moving to this new platform in using the electricity sales register system, the legal officer for revenue, Lupe Atiola Hui, says that businesses that do not follow this act will be fined up to 5,000 baanga. The Ministry of Agriculture is now more prepared to support local watermelon growers and exporters to ensure their produce will be or won't be affected by insects such as fruit flies once it is exported via shipping from to New Zealand. The main focus is to ensure that once the watermelons from Tonga arrive in New Zealand, it is safe. As such, the Ministry handed over a handbook for watermelon growers and exporters on Wednesday with hope they would follow the guidelines provided to ensure that the produce is safe from any harmful insects that would pose any threat to New Zealand's horticultural sector. Speaking to Radio Tonga News, the CEO of the ministry, Dr. William Imanu, says the handbook aims to guide the watermelon growers and exporters in Tonga to get the best result after exporting it to overseas markets. <laughs> This handbook is providing every step for growing watermelons starting from selection of the piece of land for commercial purposes and ends with the process of loading the produce to the vessels for export. The handbook was a joint effort between Tonga and New Zealand as both countries do not want to repeat what happened in the past, the discovery of the fruit fly from Tonga's consignment. Meanwhile, watermelon growers and exporters are preparing to export their produce in August or September, a great time in New Zealand as the weather is warm and the CEO hopes that Tonga would use this opportunity wisely. It is understood that watermelons were amongst the agricultural produce that were affected by the ashfall from the Hunga Tonga Hunga by volcanic eruption. Only one more week left before Mate Maatonga will play against the Kiwi team on the 25th of this month at the Mount Smart Stadium and the Tongans around the globe is delighted with excitement in supporting MMT. The Prime Minister has stated that every government ministries will wear red on Friday, including non-government ministries as part of the support to the Mate Maatonga team. The squad of the Mate Matonga team was announced this week during a press conference with the Prime Minister. In that case, the sports division of the Ministry of Internal Affairs has organised a floats parade for Friday next week as part of the support for the Mate Matonga team. Radio and Television Tonga News understands that every Friday, people around the Nuku Alofa areas are wearing red and white. Also, the vehicles and houses decorated with the Tonga flags in showing their support to the Matema Tonga team with the test match against the Kiwis next week, Saturday.
The Prime Minister, Honourable Huakawa Meiliku, also emphasised that the float parade will not only focus on the support to the Mate Matonga team, but it will also include supporting the rugby union's team Ikaletahi, also cheering for the Tonga's netball team Tala. The Ikaletahi team is preparing for their game on the 2nd of July. Last week, the Tala netball team prepared in Sydney, Australia for their trip to Fiji next month for the Oceania tournament and will finalise from there if they have a chance to join the World Cup. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister also allowed local sports and other sporting events to resume tomorrow. And the Attorney General urges women in Tonga that working hard is one of the evidences in the country that women are capable of accomplishing great things in the nation, in various sectors and all walks of life. This morning, the FIA, FIA Association hosted a public consultation with the aim to empower women in Tonga for leadership roles. In her keynote speech, and the Attorney General Linda Folametui says, in Tonga currently, important institutions such as the Legislative Assembly and the Cabinet, there's only one woman there. The number does not mean women should be discouraged from running as a candidate to Parliament or becoming a Cabinet member, but instead it should encourage them to work hard for these positions. Despite the many trainings, the many um, workshops that have been carried out 2016 and beyond that, and even Parliament carries out its training, youth uh, Parliament, and trying to encourage women to be more proactive and to stand as candidates. However, despite all that, as you all know, with the figures since 2000 and uh, beyond 2010 and even up to now, and Betty had alluded to the figures, I think approximately only five or, or seven women elected into Parliament. However, it is my advice because Betty posed the question, what now? Where now do we go from? from? I suggested to the guests today that having reflected on the elections 2010, 14, um, even up to uh, 2021, no woman was elected. Meanwhile, the chair lady of the FIA, FIA, Betty Plague, says women are not restricted to their traditional roles at home and their families, but have advanced to leadership positions in the kingdom. How can we increase women's participation in our parliament? It is not an easy subject. It will touch a lot of sensitive ankles in our society. However, we believe that there is a need for women to work together with men in every level of life, beginning from home to the highest level of decision making in our country. The FIA FIA Association hopes after this consultation there will be more ways of empowering women in Tonga in different prospective areas. And that concludes tonight's English news package. But before we part, here's a one final look at tonight's top stories. Petroleum price highly increases to new price for the month of June and July. Ministry of Police and the Ministry of Infrastructure are working to implement new regulations to road uh, transportation and Radio Tonga 1 or AM Radio was shut down temporarily for a few hours due to installation work between the transmitter and the tower at Bopua. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Alice Dupo. Have a blessed evening.